this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today we're going to be talking about book bands. We're going to be talking about Stonewall. Get your anger ready and um, get ready to send those comments to I Hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Or if you're watching on YouTube, leave them in the comments down below. And I'm running out of time to do this, so I'm going to use the shout-outs from the last episode. And here they are. Okay, so here we go. I want to give a big thank you to those motherfuckers over on Patreon. So thank you to Michael, to Cedar, to Harry. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Over at the YouTube Thank You Crew, I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, to Jan, and to Deb. And a big thank you to our newest thank you fucker over there ethan thank you so much and then over in the anarchy crew i want to give a thank you to bunny to nate to Minnie to thomas to tim to shaylin to tim to chill baby to tamra and to adam you guys are awesome thank you so much and then for the biggest swinging pendulums we have the people in the chapbook of the month club over there on YouTube's. I want to give a thank you to Caitlin and to Chase. You guys are the shit. Thank you so much. And now we're back. Okay, so let's get on with the shizzle nose. All right, so book bands. These are fucking stupid. And I'm going to go so far as to say they're stupid on the right and they're stupid on the left. Okay? They should not exist. And we'll talk about why in a little bit. But first, let's talk about this um, report that Pan America put out um, at pen.org um, just a couple days ago. Called Banned in the USA State Laws Supercharge Book Suppression in Schools. This is really important because this is just a first step, okay? Just like all of these bills that have been going through, like, uh, and if we're talking about trans, okay, like three months ago, all these anti-trans bills that were introduced were introduced in order to keep groomers from touching our kids and all this stuff. But now as these bills go, they're now about just anti-trans altogether. If you are a trans adult, you do not get health care. Boom. Just like Roe v. Wade. When the Dobbs thing came out, it was to give the power back to the states. All the Republicans were saying, you know, we're not saying that like people can't get abortions. We're just saying we should give the, the states the right to decide if they want to do abortions or not. And then just a couple months later, we're going for a federal ban on abortion. Okay, Th these are little baby steps. And if you are a writer, if you are a fucking poet, you need to fucking be worried about this. Don't worry about fucking chat GP fucking T, dude. Be worried about fucking people who are being led by either a fucking hardcore religious agenda or a hardcore pampering leftist agenda, okay? And that's hard for me to say because I am a very fucking progressive individual. I am very fucking left-leaning, very left-leaning, okay? And we're gonna talk about all this, okay? But I'm, I'm saying right now, that if you want to be able to write the things you want to write about, pay attention to these things and do what you can to stop these things. Okay. So one of the things that like I've been wanting to do this episode for a little bit. And one of the things that made this happen now, as opposed to waiting a couple more weeks is that I was listening to an episode of the Slee Ricketts podcast. And um, on this episode, they had one of my favorite pairings, Bucks and Bry, okay, were on there. And they were doing their spiels and their shtick. And I don't know if this was a misquote or if I misheard it. I went back and listened to it and it still sounded the same. But on this episode, Brian said that 
um, people aren't really banning books. It's just in Florida or something along those lines. Like it, it was like kind of like a, you know, this isn't really happening. Like we know it's happening, but it's not happening like people are saying it's happening. It is happening like people are saying it's happening. So um, th- this update on the book bans at schools, okay, it will start at schools. And then it will go further than that, okay? If you let them have it in schools, and probably in what they're saying, it'll just be like elementary schools. And then it'll be, oh, well, also high schools. Oh, well, also colleges. Oh, well, and also libraries of any kind. And also um, Walmart and Barnes & Noble. And also in your home, okay? It's a fucking progression of fucking control and power. That's all it fucking is, okay? So let's get into this before I'm going all fucking crazy here. We're going to hit um, some of the key findings here in this one. During the first half of the 22-23 school year, Head America's Index of School Book Bans lists 1,477 instances of individual books banned, affecting 874 unique titles. That is an increase of 28% compared to the prior six months. That's January through June of 22. That is more instances of book banning than recorded in either the first or second half of the 21-22 school year. Over this six-month timeline, the total instances of book bans affected over 800 titles. This equates to over 100 titles removed from student access each month. Are you hearing this yet? This school year, instances of book bans are most prevalent in, hmm, I wonder where, let's see, Texas, Florida, Missouri, Utah, and South Carolina. Shocker. Overwhelmingly, book banners continue to target stories by and about people of color, and LGBTQ plus individuals. In this six-month period, 30% of the unique titles banned are books about race, racism, or feature characters of color. Meanwhile, 26% of unique titles banned have LGBTQ plus characters or themes. Shocker. Like, this is so crazy that any of this would be if any of you are listening to this and are like, oh, wow, I didn't see that coming. Wake the fuck up. Jesus Christ. Due to cases where long lists of books are removed for further investigation, bans this school year are increasingly affecting a wider swath. I love that word of titles, including those that portray violence and abuse. Forty four percent discuss topics of health and well-being. Thirty eight percent and cover death and grief, 30%. This illuminates how censorship impacts a wide, a, wide, a, wide away, a wide array of books, particularly as school districts respond to vague legislation by removing large number of books prior to any formal review. And this just goes back to us getting exactly what we deserve. When you put dumbass people who are puppets for whatever fucking thing there is who have probably never fucking read a book in their goddamn life oh well these people don't like the gays I'll, I'll ban gay books and then the, the crowd applauds I like applause fucking idiots dude <sighs> Books are more frequently labeled pornographic or indecent. Dozens of books were targeted for removal in the 21-22 school year on the basis that they contain sexual content. But since last summer, this framing has become an increasing focus of activists and politicians to justify removing books that do not remotely fit the well-established legal and colloquial definitions of pornography. Rhetoric about porn in schools has also been advanced as justification for passage or introduction of new state laws, some of which would bar 
any books with sexual content and could easily sweep up a wide swath of literature and health related content of course it would because the last thing fucking white american dem or fucking republican motherfucking men want is for any of you to know anything about your body they want to be the ones to tell you what your body is for and how to use it for fuck's sake and again look this up there's a lot of information here um, something's going to shock you, and there is a poetry um, element here. Okay, so here we go. Subject matter of banned content. Of the 874 unique titles banned um, from July 1st to December 1st of last year, 44% of them dealt with instances of violence and physical abuse. 38% dealt with um, health and well-being for students. 30% um, dealt with themes of grief and death. 30% were characters of color or themes of race and racism. 26% was LGBTQ plus characters or themes. 24% sexual experiences between characters. And 17% mentions of teen pregnancy, abortion, or sexual assault. Now, here is where the, the fun poetry thing happens not right off the bat but in a minute here so the most banned books in the first half of the 22 23 school year which is right now what we're in right now gender queer and flamer okay have 15 bands tricks has 13 bands the handmaid's tale 12 bands crank 12 bands sold 11 bands push 11 bands a court of mist and fury 11 bands 10 bands for this book is gay and the bluest eye and a book of poetry do you know what book has 10 bands Milk and Honey by Rupi fucking Cower. Are you fucking joking me? That Milk and Fucking Honey by Rupi fucking Cower is the most dangerous book of poetry in America today. I am shocked and I am offended as a fucking poet. Oh my god. Guess what hap- guess what's going to happen to Milk and Honey now? Now that everyone knows that this book of poetry is being banned, guess what's going to happen? That book is going to sell even more copies than it already has. A ridiculous amount. And we'll talk about that in a little bit here. Okay, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, so bans on Falls 22's most banned titles have increased. Okay? For instance, last year, Milk and Honey only had three bans. Okay? But in the last few months, there's been 10 more bands put on it. Okay? Do you guys see this? Um, the Bluest Eye had 22, and now in the last couple months it's had 10. What other one? Push. Sapphire Memoir. No, I don't know. It's got a long title. It only had one. And now in the last couple months, it's gotten 11. Handmaid's Tale had four last year, has had 12 so far this year. Unbelievable. YA is a huge thing that's being banned. And the reason for this is, is that YA books are usually made to help young adults with things that young adults are dealing with. Okay? So 56% of the books that got banned from July last year to December last year 56% 56% of those were young adult, 24 were adult books, 15% were middle grade, and then 4% picture book and 1% of a chapter book, which I, I just I, I just don't know. So again, Texas and the flaccid penis of America, Florida, 
lead the charge in banning books. The number of districts that are responsible for banning the most titles. 5% of school districts have over have anywhere from 100 to 300 bans. Six districts have anywhere from 50 to 99. 14% of districts have anywhere from 20 to 49. And there's 76 fucking school districts that have instances of anywhere from 1 to 19 bans. Fucking crazy. Yeah, the especially with Florida, that fucking don't say gay bill. The Parental Rights and Education Act. A bunch of fucking bullshit, dude. Book Riot had a pretty good article about this, too. 37 states and millions of students impacted by the 22-23 school year book ban so far. And a lot of this information comes from the um, pa- uh, the Pen America article that I was just reading um, a second ago. Now, here's the thing. Some of you might not like the way that the book Gender Queer, the graphic novel that kind of started this whole fucking thing out of a fucking little tiny fucking library in the middle of fucking nowhere that this whole thing fucking started from. And I've gotten into an argument with my mom about this because she was like, some library was giving books out that had pornography in it to kids. And that's not what happened. It was a library that had a book behind the counter that if you were old enough, you would be able to check out. Okay? Now, here's the deal. If your bitch is that the library gave this book to kids, which it did not do, you have no argument. But I will give you the fucking credit that if your bitch is, why is taxpayer money going to get a book like that in the library? If you want to argue that and do like a, what do you call it, like a public forum about that, that is an argument that you can have. That is a legit argument that I can understand you having and you being able to defend and argue. That's fine. But when you say things that are not true, that did not fucking happen, and you use that as a way to like open the door to ban every fucking book that ever existed because it makes you feel bad and you don't want your kids to feel bad. This is a very fucking awful precedent to set. Why won't this fucking ice cream truck go away? Fucking talking about kids and gender and ice cream trucks blaring. So that is this part of this, okay? If you even look at my mug that I have here, this is my banned books mug. It's got titles of all these banned books on it, okay? Banned books are cool. So this is what I don't understand that the right doesn't fucking get. It's almost like Republicans, and I know that a lot of you who are Republican who listen to this don't fall into this trap and don't fall into this category. I completely understand that. What Republicans don't get is if you take something away from kids, they're going to want it more. So you ban these books and kids are going to go, oh shit, my parents don't want me to read that? Oh, that's, that's saucy. Oh my god. More kids will read these books than anyone will ever, ever Gender queer is going to end up being the next catcher in the rye for a whole generation because of you fucking idiots. If you never opened your fucking mouth about that fucking book, that to me, as a book, is not very good. It's not. Okay? It's, I understand what it is. It's a memoir. I get it. It's a graphic novel. I get it. As a book, it's not very good. You have turned this book into a fucking martyr. This book is going to be legendary for hundreds of years because of you idiots trying to fucking hide it. All of these books are going to be legendary because of these bands. There will be podcasts done 20 years from now where the podcast hosts are just going to review the books that were banned during this time. You have created a monster in these books that you're trying so hard to protect from the kids. 
Culture war issues. You have done the exact opposite thing. Have you learned nothing from Tipper fucking Gore? And the fucking um, parental advisory stickers on albums. Everyone was terrified about, oh no, they're going to put these stickers on albums. Our sales are going to fucking sink. Oh man, everything's gone. Two Live Crew and NWA were all fucked. Oh my god. And then guess what fucking happened? Guess what happened? Turns out that when you put a sticker on a fucking album that you're trying to sell to teenagers, that, hey, your parents don't want you listening to this, they're going to fucking go get it and they're going to listen to it hard. Okay? So then it came to a point where if an album didn't have the sticker on it, its sales would tank. So then everyone wanted the sticker. So then everyone was making sure that the music they were writing and and the lyrics they were writing were enough to piss parents off, enough that the record label would have to put that sticker on the album to sell fucking records. It did the exact opposite of what Tipper fucking Gore wanted. And now this is on you. Fucking wrong to Satan, you piece of shit. And all you other fucking assholes. Oh my god, I'm getting mad now. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. So the next thing I wanted to hit is um, on the far other side of this with um, Roald Dahl and um, fucking Ian Fleming and uh, who else was it? whose books are being changed. Dr. Seuss. Okay? All these books um, that say things that shouldn't be said. Use language that shouldn't be used by today's standards. Okay? Those, Those words are being changed so people feel better about them. And on that Slee Ricketts episode, they made a really good point about the Roald Dahl stuff. Netflix bought the estate, like the works, so they can make shows about it. So they changed the content of those books to be more palatable, so they can make a bunch of shows about it and make a shit ton of money about it. Okay? Do you see? All of these things, and when you change dead writers' words... Okay, some people don't give a shit. They think, oh, well, it's just you're changing with the times. I think this is a horrible, horrible fucking thing to do. And again, I am very left, okay? And this, I think, is a bad thing to do. The reason why is because I think it is so fucking important for us to learn from our past, to learn from our mistakes, to see how far we've come, okay? I was watching a season of Top Chef. Yes, I did. I watched some TV on the pewters. I watched a season of Top Chef from like 2007. And during this season, there was a lot of homophobia that was considered funny. That now, like, that would never be allowed. Like, that's just disgusting and not okay there was also a use of a word and I'm going to say it right now and I'm not trying to be shitty and just understand that I'm letting you know that this word was used a lot during the season of the show okay in a derogatory way the word was retarded We don't use that word like that anymore. It is not okay to use that word like that anymore. And you know what? That's good. That's good. And when I was watching the season of Top Chef, I wasn't like horribly offended at the um, homophobia and the use of that word. I was shocked and proud at how far we have come as a society to where things like that aren't as open as and accepted. Words like that aren't normalized now. 
Okay. If when I said the word retarded, if you got a cringe and like a ooh, that's good. That's how you should feel when you hear that word. You see what I'm saying? When it's used in that derogatory way. So one of the things I want to use, and this is coming from a guy who reads a lot of Pulp Fiction. And Pulp Fiction, written in the early 1900s through the 30s, was heavily racist and heavily misogynist. Okay? But and just so, just so you know, that's coming from this guy right here. So Stonewall. This is what we're going to talk about. Stonewall was um, a series of riots that happened in the summer of 69. And I don't think that's what Brian Adams was singing about. Um, but basically, it was a series of riots that um, happened, or protests that happened um, by members of the gay community in response to the police raid that began early in the morning on June 28th, 1969 at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village. Okay? Patrons of the bar were lesbian and gay. It was horrific. All right. So one of the things that I want to say about this is that after this happened, okay, after this um, uprising happened, Allen Ginsberg was totally excited about this afterwards, not because of the riots, but because of this. He said, gay power, isn't that great? It's about time we did something to start to assert ourselves. And then he went to the place and he's like, you know, the guys here were so beautiful. They've lost that wounded look that they had 10 years ago. Another thing that Ginsburg kind of declared was that now that this has happened, we need to shed that look, that wounded look. We will not be a part of those gay novels that came before this period. So all of those books where gays were hiding, gays were like shamed. And at the end of the book, the gay person had to die in order for a publisher to put it out. Um, to show that being gay will lead you to death and destruction and all that other shit. There is a whole culture of gay writing that happened before Stonewall that since Stonewall has been almost completely obliterated and no one knows anything about it. And I think that's bad. I think you have to be able to look back at where you've come to see how far you've gone. And anytime you bury the past like, I just feel like you're going to end up having it happen again. If you take all, like, all these book bands and you, like, just smash them away. Like, not the, the bands, but the books. Because you don't want to hear about racism. You don't want to hear about um, gay hate and all this other stuff. You don't want to hear about misogyny. You don't want to hear about abortion. You don't want to hear about any of this stuff. And you just push it away. That makes it to where future generations won't be aware of these things. So when these things come again, they won't see the warning signs. They won't see the red flags. They will just gladly take what is handed to them because they don't fucking know any better. So I am a firm believer that you should not change the words that people used. If you want people to read books to kids and you want kids to be able to read books, give them newer books. They don't have to read books written 50 to 100 years ago in order to have a normal fucking childhood. If you're worried about that, don't read those books to your kids. Wait until they're older, until they're adults. And they can go back and read the books and go, wow, man, we've come so far as a culture. This is crazy. I can't believe that this is what it was like just a few years ago. Just 30 years ago. Just 40 years ago. Banning books does nothing but make those books more popular. It shouldn't happen. 
It shouldn't be done. Okay. Changing works that were made is just trying to pretend like the past didn't happen. And we have to remember that it happened. So we don't create those same mistakes again. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about it. So um, I'll add the the butt plugs from the last episode because I just don't have time, guys. I got to split. I got to... When you are hearing this episode, I will be lounging in a cowboy pool in the desert trying to effing relax. We will see how that goes. Just because I'm out of town chillaxing, you can still find out what it's like to see me as an action figure. Okay? This is my new chapbook for the month of April, which is almost over. Um, it's got... Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 poems in here. So this is me as an action figure. And for those of you who are just listening to the audio, it's on this beautiful gold metallic paper. It is my head on a He-Man figure. And the me as an action figure is supposed to kind of look like the font of like the Masters of the Universe stuff. It's not quite it but it was the closest I could find. Um, but it's a beautiful book. I love the way it turned out. So yeah, so that'll be over at my Etsy shop. Links will be down below. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to me at ihatematwall.gmail.com. Go to ihatematwall.com to find out all about everything that's going on. Keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.